Let's do a probability calculation. So the question is, if we have a particle that is in an infinite square well, what is the probability of finding that particle between 3 quarters of L and L? So effectively, we have our well, what's the probability of finding it in this far last quarter? So what do we do? To set this up, we say that this probability is going to be equal to the integral from 3 quarters L up to L. Then what do we write? We would write this then as our complex conjugate of our quantum state as a function of x multiplied by our state. And again, I, I didn't say this, but this would be for an energy eigenstate, not for any particle, but for an energy eigenstate. OK, so that's our setup. So the next piece is we actually have to say what that phi is. And so we can use the result that we know what phi is going to be for our infinite well. So if I just write that phi of x is equal to square root of 2 over L, again, that's the normalization condition, and then sine of n pi x over L. That's my phi. Now notice that this isn't actually imaginary. It's not complex. It could be, but it isn't. So then when I go to calculate this probability, um, this is just going to be the function squared. Nice and easy. So I still have that integral, and it's important to notice here that it is a bounded integral, not indefinite. And so when I square this, I get 2 over L sine squared of n pi x over L. OK, and then dx. So now I need to integrate that. In the appendix F of the book, there's a table of integrals. Please do not just get in the habit of going to Wolfram Alpha or whatever tool you use to do the integrals. Learn to do this by hand. So the form that we find when we look in the table of integrals in the back of the book, there are other tables of integrals that are fine. But we see that there's a form, which is that the integral of sine squared of ax dx is equal to 1 half x minus 1 over 2a, and I don't know this off the top of my head, which is why I have to keep looking, sine of ax, cosine of ax. And that is equation f4. OK. Now, you might say, well, how is that helpful? This has bounds. What is x? Go with this. One thing we need to do is sometimes it's a little bit tricky to figure out what integral you can use, but this is it. So notice that we're going to set a to be equal to n pi over l. Don't forget that. So I'm going to come back now. Notice that I can pull this 2 over l outside. And I'm now going to be very careful with my brackets. So what I actually have here is the integral of sine squared of ax. OK. So the first thing I have is 1 half x. Fine. What is x? Well, we're going to plug in our bounds. It's fine. And then minus 1 over 2a. So 1 over 2, but now notice that a is n pi over l. OK, so n pi over l. And then sine of ax, so n pi x over l, and then cosine, this marker's not doing so good, of n pi x over l. But now remember that you have limits of integration to worry about. Don't forget those. So that goes from 3 quarters l to l. I'm just about out of room, so I won't be able to go through this entire thing in detail. But notice that what we're going to have, that mark is much better, right? This first term I can write, I can consider kind of each of these separately, right? I can break this up. So I have x equals l minus 3l over 4, right? So x equals l minus 3l over 4. That's just going to be 1 quarter l, no big deal. Now, I then have minus l over 2n pi. 
notice that it seems like this probability is going to depend on n. I didn't actually say anything about like which state it is in originally. So it does seem like that matters. That is in fact an L. And now what I need to do, and I'll nest some brackets, we have sine of n pi L over L cosine of n pi L over L minus, and I'm now plugging in, uh, sorry, the n pi 3L over 4L, and then cosine n pi 3L over 4L. Close bracket, close bracket. Okay. So what you would do next is say, okay, this first term is, is easy. You can ask, what do we expect to happen with units? This is a probability. That means we expect it to be a number between 0 and 1 that's real, and that doesn't actually have any units. So we have 2 over L outside the very, very front. So this term needs to have an L in it, and it does. It's L minus 3L over 4. So this gives me 1 quarter L times 1 half. That's 1 eighth L, but then I'm multiplying it by 2 over L. So that's good, those L's cancel. So notice that this also has an L on top over 2n pi, so it's going to depend on n, but then this is just gonna be a number. And sine and cosine multiplied together, okay, this seems like a real number with roughly the right range, though notice we have a number here, and then we have a subtraction of a number, so if we get a negative sign, that means something's gone wrong somewhere. Um, the final step would then be to say, okay, can I simplify this without making any specific assumptions about n? So I'm not going to be able to get to a specific number until we plug in n equals 1 or n equals 2, but there's something we can start to argue about these. Remember our boundary conditions, that if I have n pi L over L, that's the same thing as n pi, right? So what is sine? of n pi. That's zero, right? Sine of n pi equals zero, right? Sine of zero is zero, sine of pi is zero, sine of two pi. So, so actually, it doesn't matter what this is, though it would be one or negative one. This term goes to zero, so this entire first term drops out. Then we would have to go over here, and now we actually have to know something about what n is. Um, or you can make lots of very complicated symmetry arguments. But the nice thing now is that we have a minus sign and a minus sign, so those, those cancel. But again, depending on the specific values you have of sine and cosine, maybe another minus sign could, could show up. So I'll stop there, but the key here is understanding when you have a probability question, you have to set up that integral, specifically have whatever the state is that you're dealing with, and then really use those tables of integrals to get to the next step do some simplification, and then in this case, go a little bit farther once we know a specific value then.